let's have a look at technicals. Uh, so that's what we can see. Some companies for several years, they can grow quite a lot as Cisco. Can you imagine this fantastic growth? A lot of people uh, at that time, they were buying it. And then this fall happened. Okay. And uh, it fell uh, to the same level as it was in 2007 or something like that. Yes, company was growing at the time. Yes, company, I believe, still was good at that time, but it was too overvalued. So that's why you have to be really, really careful when you're buying on hypes. If you see some companies right now, uh, they kind of benefited from that pandemic and uh, uh, their business is improved. You have to always evaluate how much it improved and then compare with the growth in price. If the price grew quite a lot, don't bother about it. Okay, it's too risky. Okay, and that's my opinion again, guys. And that's what we see. Cisco was practically uh, on the same level between ten and thirty dollars within ten years, more than thirteen years, and then start steadily growing, 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 growing. Right, reached nearly sixty dollars, and uh, for the last year, from two thousand eighteen, this is uh, it's kind of dropped down to this is a pandemic time low point. Okay, and outbound back. Now, if we go to more closer picture, uh, let the slide appear. That's what we can see. So you see from September 2018, we grew to the level of $40. Uh, then we were flat for practically nine months, then kind of broke to that level, tested it again, and then company moved all the way up on the good earnings, okay, until fifty-eight dollars. Right uh, in two thousand, remember I showed you that from two thousand nineteen, we had a uh, drop in revenue, and that's what affected the price. Here there was a positive news. Here was a, a part of negative news. As a result, the company dropped down. Okay. We can see this is a huge drop in uh, March. Okay, this is what happened. And the lowest point was $33 and it bounced really, really quickly back up. Now, what I wanted to show you on that particular graph, first of all, it is a weekly, a weekly chart. It means that one candle is one week. Okay, I want to show you that level, which is $40, it's quite important level. Uh, look, we touched it several times. We have this green candle bounce from that level. We can see in 2018, one, two, three, four times uh, company bounced from that level. Also, uh, when the crisis happened, the first candle, we can see weekly candle, it's just finished on that level. Okay. And uh, then it, uh, it was a support for several weeks here. You can see and now again, we slow down on that level. Uh, can it break through and go lower? Sure it can. Everything is possible in the stock market, but a lot of traders who trade and uh, like identify their strategy uh, based on technical analysis, they will keep an eye here quite a lot on that particular trend, okay? And very, very possible that it will become the next, the, the current support and it can bounce back from, from this level. So that's why um, I'm going to, kind of, that's why I chose this company as well, one of this. Now, this is a daily chart. It looks already at the last year from 2019 uh, onwards. So that's what we see, this drop from $58. Uh, we actually don't see this drop. Uh, this is the drop in March, what happened. Okay, and look what happened. It went up and start selling in these levels. Okay, between $40 and roughly $44, 40, 42 to $42 was the highest, right? Then it broke through and that went all the way to $48. The interesting enough that previously it was as well the level, okay? Uh, touched here and that was last earnings where they, uh, they kind of uh, performed better than expected but they made worse projections 
so that they are not going to make that amount of money which they promised in the future because they have certain uncertainties. A company dropped from $48 to $40 right now. So remember that company, if we go back in the uh, value line, we will see that in 2008, or sorry, 2018, company was making, I think if I remember correctly, $2.8. Okay, the company in 2018 was making $2.6 uh, dollars in profit. I'm going to wait until it appears on your screen. Just a second. I actually didn't know that it, uh, it's, a slow, it's a bit of delay in showing the slides. Just a second. Okay, we see 2017 and 2018. We see that the uh, earnings per share, they were making 2.4 and 2.6 dollars. Currently, the company is making 3.2 dollars. So it means that 60 cents more, 60 cents from 2.6 is roughly what, about 20, uh, five percent roughly like that okay now if we go back to technical analysis uh, so that's what we can see that in 2018 we had ex exactly the price the same price as now so it means that we can buy share which makes 25 percent more in earnings now for the in price which was in 2018 the question is why is like that okay why the price of the better business is exactly the same as it was when it was a bit worse okay and that's what tells us that this company is undervalued right now now for us it's more important to understand uh, is it going to go low or not it's very difficult to predict practically impossible to evaluate because a lot of uncertainties right now, as I already explained in the very beginning of our lecture that uh, we're expecting uh, president elections, we're expecting earnings reports and things like that they can trigger. For example, Cisco had report and we can see the drop. Okay, and a lot of, believe me, a lot of uh, other businesses in that particular industry, they dropped as well in price. Okay, and uh, also, we can see the uh, like trends still going down. So if we look at this specific trend, we might expect that it's continue going down and uh, close to around $37 level or something like that, okay? Or maybe even lower if the index is going to go down. The question is, what happens if it uh, bounces from that level and start to going up, okay? Most likely, there would be the level which was previously. So first, I'm going to draw the line for you, just a second. Okay, for example, this level, previous support can become a resistant. This level as well. So generally during that level, so if it bounces back, it will slow down some way here. If it breaks through that level, this is going to be next level, okay? If it breaks through that level, it's going to be higher, okay? And uh, et cetera. So it can go all the way there and then all the way up. So if it keeps going down, okay? So does this roll? So we can expect some way here and then another roll. And if it breaks through, at the moment, the lowest thing we have, it's just here, so just $3. Now, we don't have anything extra here. So that's why if it breaks through this level, we don't know where the bottom is. But that would be technical bottom. Fundamental bottom we found with you, uh, based on valuation, it's $37. So it's roughly 37.80. It's about uh, this particular level, okay? So that's why you, when you're making a decision, you have to think, okay, what do you want to do? Yes, I can wait until this moment, but it never, it might never happen, right? Because the share price might bounce from this strong support level and go all the way to $45 or $49 or $42. It depends on the uh, like amplitude and uh, you can miss this opportunity. So what will, what will you do guys? That's what you see, okay, currently. What are you going to do? 
Are you going to buy the share or are you going to wait? And if you're going to buy it, at what levels you're going to buy it? And if you buy it, at what levels you're going to sell it? So can you please put what you are going to, like, I mean, if you decided to buy this company, what would you do? Will you wait until it drops lower? Or will you buy it? And if you buy it, when you're going to sell it? Can you please write it down? Okay. Uh, before we decide the strategy, uh, I understand that you guys, some of you, you know, puts and uh, et cetera, you're more advanced in this particular case. Before you decide for any strategy, buying calls, selling puts, uh, using any straddles or whatever, you need to understand how underlying security is going to move. So the first question before we decide to sell put or not, we have to look at volatility and the option premium and other parameters. But before that, we have to decide how much the stock is going to move. Okay. So Maria, 40, 45 would buy, sell when grew. Okay, Maria, this is the common mistake for a lot of beginners. Sell when it grew. Grew until what level? You need to know specifically at what level. If you base your decision uh, on fundamentals, we evaluate at fundamental level. If you based on technical level, you have to tell and uh, sell it based on technical level. But you definitely have to know the price because if you wait until it grew, I'll tell you what happens. It grows 10%, you're happy. It grows another 5%, you're happier. And you believe, okay, the stock is going to continue to grow. And then it starts sliding down. And the majority of people sit, okay, now it's going to recover and go up again. And then it doesn't recover. It continues to go down. And then it returns to the same level where you purchased it. And that would be the frustrating part, okay? Because you would miss your opportunities. Okay, maybe you sell at 56. Okay, uh, William was way to confirm bounce off the current support before the enter position. Okay, that's great. Okay, fantastic. Okay, great, guys. 